So it seems like trust in politicians and the media really is at an all-time low, which is kind of nice to see. So you're probably wondering, if you're anything like me, what are they up to while they've got us focused on other things? Well, one thing the media and the politicians aren't really talking about is this cash ban bill that they're trying to ram through. Now, what is it? It's basically, it's a new law that if passed would make cash transactions over $10,000 illegal and anybody found guilty of violating that law could be sentenced to prison for up to two years. Now, the reason they give us is that apparently Australia is suffering from a very big problem in the black economy. This is something that the whole of government's focused on now, the Treasury, the ATO, everything. They've got the media behind them as well. Um, but let's see if we can go a little bit deeper and see what's really going on. Now, if you want to find details of the actual bill, you can find it on the Parliament of Australia website. Just Google restrictions on the use of cash bill 2019 and you'll be led to this website. Basically, you can see information about where the bill's at, how quickly it passed through the House of Representatives. Interesting, isn't it, that when it comes to issues like this, money that uh, issues that are controlled by the bankers that both Labor and Liberals seem to unite and pass these bills super quickly. Um, you can also actually read the text of the bill in different formats, um, read the transcripts of different speeches that have come from ministers that have spoken about the bill from both sides. Now isn't it interesting that at the same time Australia's politicians and media are doing this and telling us it's uh, apparently an independent thing that they're pushing forward for the benefit of our country, that there's many other countries around the world pushing for the exact same thing using the exact same reasons. Let's take a look at a couple. Malaysia too is planning on bringing in a cash transaction limit of 25,000 Malaysian ringgit starting next year, about uh, 6,000 US dollars. Uh, the government's reason, similar to ours, uh, this is to address the abuse of physical cash used for illicit activities apparently, which is harming the country. Germany as well has planned to bring in limits on cash transactions. Their proposals were for 5,000 euros, which is again is around that 6,000 US dollar mark. Uh, why? Uh, the government's reason again, to combat money laundering and the financing of terrorism. Interestingly though, the head of Germany's central bank, Jens Wiedmann, has distanced himself from the government's proposal, stating it would be fatal if citizens got the impression that cash is gradually being taken away from them. Now, France has already introduced cash transaction limits to fight something that they've dubbed low-cost terrorism. People who live in France will not be allowed to make payments of more than 1,000 euros in cash, down from 3,000 euros that the government started at. Now, this is an interesting article because you might say in Australia, well, $10,000, yeah, that's a fair enough limit. Anyone above that, you know, may be doing nefarious things, whether or not you believe the government's propaganda about that. But once this bill passes, just like in France, the minister in charge will be able to reduce the limit any time that they want to whatever limit that they want to. They won't have to go through the same scrutiny of going through um, the House of Representatives and the Senate to get this approved. So that $10,000 could quickly be reduced to $5,000 or $3,000 or $1,000. So making anybody that transacts, transacts in uh, amounts of that or higher all of a sudden a criminal which could apply to you or any of your family members. Now, if all these countries are doing the same thing at the same time, could they really be independent decisions that those politicians are making for the good of their country and their people? Or is it more likely that this is actually a push coming from somewhere else? Now, a very interesting article that you can find on the website of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is titled, Cashing In, How to Make Negative Interest Rates Work. Now, I'd recommend that you read the whole article. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but basically they note that many central banks reduced interest rates to zero during the GFC in order to boost growth. And 10 years later, interest rates remain extremely low in most countries. So we have to ask ourselves, has, has having interest rates at zero actually worked? Well, the IMF claims yes, and they state that the global economy is recovering, which is highly debatable if we actually look around at the state of the world. But nevertheless, they do also admit that future recessions are inevitable. Uh, severe recessions have always required at least three to six percentage points cut in interest rates to turn things around, according to them. And given where the world is now, that is not actually possible when the next crisis hits with most central banks very close to zero already. Um, but don't worry, the bankers have a solution for their problems. What is it? Get rid of cash. 
Now, instead of taking responsibility for their crimes, letting the bad actors in the industry go bankrupt, putting the criminals in prison, etc., they resorted to instead reducing interest rates to zero to make sure nobody who does the right thing and actually saves money is rewarded for it, and also to eliminate the risk associated with borrowing money so that those fortunate enough to have access to the zero interest rate money can just run rampant. If they go bankrupt, no biggie, they can just run away from their responsibilities. And they've had their puppet politicians bring in QE or quantitative easing as well, which is basically transferring the bad debts of the banks onto the public. So we pay full price with our taxpayer money for things that are almost worthless and go further into debt on a national level all around the world. Now, why would they need to ban cash as well as this? Well, in their words, in a cashless world, there would be no lower bounds on interest rates. They could go not only to zero, but actually well below into negative territory. Now, negative interest rates basically means that you would pay the bank interest to hold onto your money. And negative interest rates would apply to bank deposits, loans, and bonds, they claim. However, I wouldn't hold your breath expecting that the interest rate, the negative interest rate is actually going to apply to your credit card um, so that the banks are actually paying you. That'll never happen. Just like credit cards, despite the reductions in rates that we've already seen, are still strongly in positive territory, and the banks are just making larger and larger profits off them. Now, charging you to hang on to your money, they claim, would make spending and investing it more attractive, boosting demand and stimulating the economy. When cash exists, however, nobody in their right mind is actually going to keep their money with the banks and lose their wealth every year when they can maintain their wealth at the same level simply by using cash. Now, you can read the whole article, but basically they go on to claim that countries that have already gone into negative interest like Sweden, Switzerland, Denmark, have seen a boost to their GDP, which is actually completely false as their growth rate is sitting below Australia's. So if Australia is positive and they've gone negative, it makes sense that, according to the logic of the IMF, that their GDP growth rate should actually be higher than Australia's. Well, they're not. Uh, they even have some other disgraceful tactics on there for forcing all of us into a cashless system controlled by them and stealing more of our wealth, which they'll outline in the article if you want to read it. I'll link to it in the bottom. Um, they do state that important modifications to the legal and financial systems in each country are required and an enormous communications, aka propaganda effort, which is what we see rolling out at, mo at the moment with these cash bans, uh, all masterminded by the unelected and unaccountable bankers at the IMF. Now we know that the banks are some of the biggest funders of our political parties, making the biggest financial campaign contributions to them. So those politicians do what they're told when it comes to listening to those bankers. So why all of a sudden would they be re pushing really hard for this cash ban bill everywhere? Now there seems to be a little bit of an extra air of desperation in the air when it comes to the banks and the politicians at the moment. And that could well be because they know something that's been hidden by the corporate media from the rest of us, which is that we are very, very close to the next global financial crisis. And given the fact that they've used all manner of tactics to try and delay it and reinflate bubbles and all the rest of it, this one could be very, very big. Now, this is a really important issue because if the politicians and banks can force you and I into a system that they control 100%, cashless system, then they can start using their methods to control not only your behavior, but your economic and financial decisions that you make for you and your family. Now, they can keep pushing really hard to try and convince all of us that property is at bargain prices, and that the property market's poised for massive growth spurt again, or that the stock market's going to just continue reaching all-time highs. But that's the exact same message that they were pumping out in 2007, just before that massive crash that wiped out billions of dollars of wealth from you and I and everybody else. You know, I don't know about you, but I lost quite a lot of money from my superannuation account basically overnight. So it's not all actually bad news because for the first time ever in our lifetimes, in the event of the next financial crisis, which is well overdue, we actually have an alternative that's not controlled by any bank, any corporation, any politician, nothing. Bitcoin. If one way or another we're heading into a cashless society, I for one would much rather it be one that Bitcoin is the currency that's used by us, that's controlled by nobody, and it's a currency of the people, rather than one that's controlled by a bunch of bankers and politicians. Now, what's so good about Bitcoin? 
Look, one of the biggest problems with the current financial system is the fact that banks and politicians can create more money out of thin air any time they choose, meaning that every time they do that, they steal a little bit of yours and my wealth, making the purchasing power of the money that we have in our wallet right now worth that little bit less. But because they do it slowly, most people don't really kick up a stink about it. Unless you're living in Venezuela or Zimbabwe where inflation goes sky high, the fact that Australia and other developed countries do inflation at just a small rate, most people seem to want to put up with it. The beauty of Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies is the fact that the supply of the cryptocurrency is limited. It's a fixed supply. Everybody knows the inflation rate. The inflation rate is slowing down over time. And as the demand increases and the supply stays the same, the value of your money actually goes up, which is the complete opposite of the system that we're in now. So imagine having being able to put your wealth into something that actually grows every year, a currency that grows in value every year. We're just so used to accepting the fact that our, our money is gonna be worth less next year than it is this year, that we just sort of put up with it. But now that we've actually got an alternative, imagine, just stop and have a think for a minute how amazing that is to have a currency that if you, the longer you hang on to it, the stronger your purchasing power is. It actually encourages people to save again. Like it actually puts an incentive in there for people to save, which at the moment we get zero incentive to save our money with the banks. We go backwards. I'm gonna make a bunch of other videos talking about the existing financial system and the problems that uh, I think there is that exist with it, as well as a bunch of videos about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, other types of investments and currencies and different things that are way more beneficial for the people rather than the politicians and the bankers that control them. So yeah, if you like the video, let us know in the comments or if you've got any questions or any type of other things that you wanna learn about, we can learn about them together. And thanks for watching.